adventure, sports, outdoors. With host, Billy Canterbury. standing here with my little cousin, Ruger Hilst. He is with the Young Marines program in Peoria, Illinois. He helped out a lot today in commemorating the 70th anniversary of the end of the Korean War. As we all know, the Forgotten War. One of those wars, just like any, that needs to be remembered for the sacrifices that people have done in the past, just like this young man here is going to do in the future, like I did and like my grandfather and so many before us. Welcome back to another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. Join me today as we pay tribute and honor the Korean veterans who fought so courageously and suffered so much in the past for the freedoms that we have and so many take for granted today. We are going to visit Pat Sullivan down on the riverfront who is going to cover a bit of the Boys and Girls Club we're also going to take a trip back in time on a flashback with my dad, Harry Canterbury, on one of those classic ASO rewinds. Stay tuned for a wonderful show. Me, like my cousin Ruger, love having you here. Adventure Sports Outdoors is brought to you in part by Corsaw Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products, buyers of standing timber in Smithfield, Kelleher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's Riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily. The Peoria Sportsman's Club, delicious dinners every Tuesday from 5.30 till 7.30 and Friday from 6 till 8 on beautiful Spring Lake in Manitou, Illinois. Goodwill, supporting our veterans with job placement assistance, health, housing, and resource referrals, and the General Wayne A. Downing Home for Veterans, all because you shop and donate. Our thanks to all of these sponsors. This month, Billy Canterbury was in downtown Peoria for the ceremony marking the anniversary of the ceasefire in the Korean conflict and paying tribute to Peoria County's 97 soldiers who never made it home. What's your name, sir? Larry Frank. Larry, Larry Frank? Yep. Vietnam veteran. Vietnam veteran. And is this uh, Army, Marine Corps? I'm Army. Army? What were you? Air Force. Air Force? And what's your name, ma'am? Elizabeth Civarella. Elizabeth Civarella. Vietnam vet. Vietnam veteran. And I was in the Navy. How you doing, gentlemen? Hi, thank you. What's your name, sir? I'm James DeLoach, retired captain in the United States Army, and uh, I serve at Post 2, and uh, we're just glad to be here to honor the Korean veterans. You know, they're uh, a long time they're forgotten by everybody else, but we like to thank yes, them. Yes, sir. And, uh, Give tribute to them when we have the opportunity. Yes, sir. It's a great yeah. occasion for us to be out here today. You beautifully said. Yeah. Couldn't be said better. Thanks. It's an honor to meet you. N nice to meet you, too. Thanks for uh, the spirit that you carry on, man. That's only if more people, well, it takes takes examples like yourselves for people to see what there is. and. A absolutely, you know, and uh, we're just glad to see people come out to remember, you know, our Korean veterans as well as all veterans, you know. Yes, Too sir. often our veterans are forgotten and uh, they're not given the recognition they deserve. And so when we have the opportunity to recognize and to uh, give tribute to them, you know, it's an honor and a privilege. And uh, we just appreciate the chance to do it. Thank you, sir, for doing what you do. And you're the combat photographer? That's me. <laughs> Actually, I was a blacksmith. Oh, a blacksmith. <laughs> yeah. What's your name, sir? Park Raider, Alan. 
Nice to meet you. Well, thanks for your service and everything you do. You're welcome. It's beautiful. This guy right here. There's a lot. <laughs> In Korea, he was a blacksmith. Okay. You know what a blacksmith is? That's where you were. You were Okay, he said he was a blacksmith, but you were a blacksmith in Korea. Yeah. yeah. Holy smoke, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I made no smoke in my mouth. <laughs> well, you know what blacksmiths do, don't you? They put horseshoes on. Sure. Isn't that what a blacksmith does? <laughs> no, that's a farrier. Oh, 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 I thought that's what a blacksmith did. Oh, uh, I'm just an iron man. <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. That's pretty cool. Um, if you want to get a... Interesting story about him. Okay. Go on YouTube. Ah. Seven veterans. It's um, a thing that uh, one of our guys uh, recorded, and uh, he has an interesting story. Seven veterans speak. Yeah. That's a good title. I like that. Yeah, American Legion. Okay. Post number two. All right. I'll see if I can find that. Well, I'll tell you what. Hey. You talk to this guy? And let me let me get your name real quick, ma'am. My name is Diane. Diane, and you're the bagpipe player. I am. Oh man, you carry a you carry a sacred spirit, don't you? Thank you. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's an honor. Yes. 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 because loved ones have not returned from battle, and so many have given the last full measure of devotion that we might be free. There are those who still suffer from the wounds that they have suffered in combat. We pray, O oh God, that you would give them comfort. Give comfort to those who sorrow and those who wait, those who are hurting because of their loss. We pray, O oh Lord, that we may have peace in our time, that those sacrifices will not have to be repeated. By three days later, they had conquered and captured the capital of South Korea, Seoul. The United States had troops on the ground by July the 1st. It's those who made the ultimate sacrifice that have the most to say. Listen to their silence. Today, we take this opportunity to honor, remember, and pay tribute to the Korean War veterans who fought to defend values and freedoms that the people of South Korea enjoy today. Blackwell, Turner F., Army, Corporal, died 12 February, 51, died while captured. Bristol, Robert O., Army, Corporal, 19 July, 1950, killed in action. Friday, Richard E., Army Corporal, died 1 September, 1950, died while he was MIA. Davis, Normal Ray, Army, PFC, died 13 February, 1951, died while captured. Day, Gerald Frederick, Army Corporal, <clears throat> died 2 December, 1950, died while missing. Denham, Dale Allen. Army, PFC, died 20 July 1950, died while captured. Young Marine Private Hernandez. I'm Young Marine Lance Corporal Stickhost. Young Marine Private Stone. Young Marine Private Hiltz. Young Marine Lance Corporal Parnell. All right, warriors.
Hi, I'm Dave Barth with your Sportsman's Tip of the Week. There's been a lot of advancements in the last few years on concealed carry handguns. And here we have a few examples of some of the new pistols on the market. This is a Sig Sauer. It's a P238. It's a 380. It's an inline magazine. It's small, compact, has a manual safety and night sights. Then they make these in half a dozen different colors. Black and black, black and silver, uh, wood grips, synthetic grips. And the little, the big brother to this pistol is the SIG 938. It's a nine millimeter. It's an inline magazine, manual safety, and night sights. In fact, the safety is ambidextrous on this particular pistol. Nice, small, compact, quality pistol. And here's something new in the last few years. These have been really hard to get. The, uh, they're freeing up a little bit. This is a 365. This particular pistol is a stagger magazine, holds 10 rounds of nine millimeter. Small, compact, very, very nice pistol. Smith & Wesson offers this pistol in a 380. if you have weak hands, arthritis. This is the EZ model. It has a real easy to cock slide. It has a grip safety, a manual safety, the slide locks back when it's empty. It has high vis sights, loaded chamber indicator, and uh, it's a good choice, lightweight pistol. Ruger's made these for a few years. This is a turquoise model. They make them in all different colors. It's called the EC9. It's a nine millimeter, has a manual safety. They also make them without the safety if you uh, want just the trigger safety and a fire and pin block safety. Then a new pistol on the market is from Glock. It's a two-tone, it's a model 43X and nine millimeter. It has a inline magazine that holds 10 rounds. The magazine release is uh, ambidextrous. It has a lever trigger safety uh, on the trigger. It has night sights. It has a fire and pin block safety. Nice quality pistol, thin, compact, lightweight. I'm Dave Barth with your Sportsman's Tip of the Week. Earlier this month, we went to Kelleher's and paid a visit to our very own Pat Sullivan, Mr. Fish. When he's not fishing, he's cooking fish, and he's always doing something special for the community. This time, it was the ultimate block party to benefit our friends at St. Jude and the Boys and Girls Club. We're doing an epic block party again. Uh, this time, we're raising money for St. Jude and Boys and Girls Club. This starting the 4th of July weekend, and uh, we're starting on a Friday night because 4th of July is gonna be Tuesday, so you might as well celebrate all the days. What we got going, we have two bands tonight, so it's music all night. What we have is, is our outside grill going. We had roasted a pig over here. We're selling uh, pig uh, pork sandwiches. We're trying to raise some money for St. Jude and, and, and Boys and Girls Club. And, and here comes a good old friend of mine from Walter Brothers. Come on in here. Come on in here. <laughs> this guy, he does it. He backs everything that's good. I, I, when I had the boxing team 30 some years ago, or back in the 80s, late 80s, and I'd go out there, I, they weren't out there, they were down the street at that yeah. time. Yeah. And, and um, it was great. They, they would always uh, help buy trophies for the kids, for the Boys and Girls Club, and, and uh, our boxing program sure flourish with some people like this. And he does it for St. Jude, he does it for a lot, a lot of charities. We yeah. thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Wayne. Yep, we thank you, sir. And uh, he's gonna enjoy himself tonight. Uh, yes, you know, we roasted a pig just for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't eat much anymore. No, 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 I know it. They got us on diets. Yeah. <laughs> diets and pills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but thank you, buddy, again. I'm Jalen Sullivan. I'm selling desserts here. I've always loved baking and all the proceeds today go towards my St. Jude run. I started running last year and this will be my second year and I'm running for Tessa. Chocolate chip cookies here, red velvet with chocolate chips and cream cheese frosting, vanilla with the vanilla buttercream, sugar cookies with vanilla buttercream and then this is just a variety pack of both of the cupcakes.
A few days later, it was the 4th of July, and we were back down at the riverfront with Pat Sullivan raising more money and having a lot of fun at the Boys and Girls Club Family Fun Fest. All right, good evening. It's almost uh, 7 o'clock on July 4th. Of course, we're having the big uh, fireworks show right on the river. The fireworks are being shot off of the barges. And we have the annual uh, Boys and Girls Club Family Fun Fest because we have all kinds of games for the kids, all kinds of uh, face painting, balloons. Uh, the, the, the tickets that includes this, your sandwiches, your pork sandwich, your hamburger, your hot dog, your brat, uh, potato chips, uh, all kinds of stuff that you can eat, ice cream and so forth. So it's uh, just a good, good evening and uh, Hopefully we'll raise up about $68,000 this year. And that'll get us over the 23 years we've been doing this, it'll get us close to a million dollars. So it'd be great to do. We have two units in the Boys and Girls Club. One's on Kansas uh, and Wisconsin, and one's down on Grinnell. That's the one I went to over 55 some years ago. So uh, still a good memory and uh, a lot of good things happened there. Uh, so we're, we're, we're anxious to get this fireworks going. The sun's still out, so we've probably got two and a half hours before the fireworks take off. Hello, my name's Edward Parker, AKA Officer Parker, Officer Friendly. Been working for Mr. Sullivan a little under 15 years now doing private security events such as this one, pig swigs, multiple different events, uh, the St. Patty's Day event. Uh, let me think, let me think. This 4th of July thing, I think we've just do, been doing this just under 10 years now because they didn't do it one year because of COVID and everything. But other than that, hey man, I'm just here to make sure everybody's safe, sound and secure, make sure everything's go smooth as possible. And it's an amazing event to uh, for a charitable cause for a uh, Boys and Girls Club.
on Grandview Drive in Peoria, one of the prettiest places the city has. And uh, I'm with, of course, my good friend Norm Kelly, the historian of Peoria. He's wrote uh, many books yes. and knows an awful lot about this town. And the story is, oh, look at here, we got a turkey. Oh, Check out, look yeah. at here, we got a... Can we you got see a, that? There he is. Check, check well, him out. Why is he by himself? Well, there's another one right over here. Man. But there's turkeys all over here. I don't suppose we should shoot one here. You no, got we're out of season. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> anyway, I couldn't hit it with a 38, could I? But it's a beautiful drive through here. And uh, there's a story about this road. Of course, mm -hmm. this was made by, by drags. They had mules, and they would drag behind them. They, first of all, they had to come here and cut the trees down. Yeah. They had to burn the stumps out. And after they did that, uh, they uh, had a mud road. This road is 2.3 miles long. 2.3 Two. from one end uh -huh. to the other. 2.3. If you notice there, there's a lot of beautiful homes. They start right in here and they're just gorgeous. All right. Of course, uh, Teddy Roosevelt in uh, 1910 That's took true. a ride up here with a guy by the name of you told me Bartholomew. Yeah, Bartholomew. And he owned, uh, you believe, a Glide dealership. I he was, uh, yeah. I, he I, was I, riding in a Glide. Uh -huh. This car is 20 years newer than the wow. one that they drove in. Man. But it would have been the same deal, a convertible. As they drove along, Bartholomew apologized for the rough road, and Teddy Roosevelt was said to have said, who knows, but Bartholomew, he said, what makes the difference is some world's most beautiful drive. That was an exact quote that was in the early paper. Uh, but it was seven years old by then, so they'd made a tremendous amount of improvement, you know. And he was gonna go to lunch up here at the country club. That well, we'll drive up there. And okay. We're taking the exact same route that Teddy Roosevelt would have taken back in 1910. That's right, you know. We have a nice drive around here. Yeah. I wonder if they had that way back in the old days, you know. I'm sure they did. But and they had carriages, you can imagine. Carriages, them. Yeah. yeah. Horses. It's a beautiful and, building. Oh, yeah. I've been in there many times. It's just oh, gorgeous. Yeah. So they made it and had lunch, and of course, Teddy would have given a speech of some kind, you know. Well, tell us about uh, Mr. Kaler. Um, he lived here in Peoria. Uh -huh. Just give us a brief bio about what well, he did. Enos is his first name. I don't know his middle name. And uh, he lived uh, up near Bradley at one time. And he was, uh, didn't have a degree, but he worked at Bradley as selling crystal sets. He didn't sell them, but he, he put them together. A crystal set in those days. And I actually have a held one in my hand because my brother put one together. And, and he always apparently wanted to, to be able to be on the radio, and that's exactly what he decided. So he moved to Peoria Heights and there, and on Glen. Did I say Glen? Glen, yeah. 107 East. And Bill, uh, all the parts that go with, uh, what, transmitter, Harry, what else? What they have. Just whatever, transformer, transmitter. Well, I'm not a radio guy. But. Yeah, and he put, did it all in his basement and in his garage and in his living room. The station was actually in the living room itself. You know, the mic, I guess, or whatever you say. In 1927, uh, he'd gotten it all together and already sent to the FCC uh, application for his license. And he just sent it away like anybody else would do, and it was approved, which kind of surprised him. And uh, one day, he said to his wife, if I get a letter from them, call me. Uh, and he'd be up at Bradley probably at that time, and call me and read it to me, because he said, I can hardly wait. And so I'm gonna call her Hazel, I hope I got your name. And so she did get the letter and she called it up. And when he answered, she said, hello, WMBD. And then he said, that's it, we got it. And that was how he got those call letters. He didn't think it out himself, believe me. He just didn't care. And the 1470, of course, uh, comes along with that. The, what would those call, Harry? They're not the call letters. That's the frequency. The frequency would be 1470. 
And so now he's got everything he needs. And so then on February uh, uh, 14, 1927, I might have that date right, 1927, uh, he gets it all set up and he goes on the air. And when he, he's, everything is working, he says, this is WMBD on, uh, war, on the world's most beautiful drive in Peoria Heights. That's what he said. And they play music and they talk a little bit and there's friends of his there. And then he gets uh, uh, the first uh, sponsor, he gets his Lowensteins at the old furniture store. And, and from then, he kept the station then for three years and he sold it to somebody for 110000 and he went off to California. That was the end of him. He had a lot of experience. He's an electrician and managing that, putting together uh, a, a radio station that ended up downtown in the Majestic Theater. A lot of old Peorians might have heard about Majestic Theater. And then they moved over to the one that you guys probably know, Harry. Remember? Yeah, well, and they, they had a marquee out there. Yeah, downtown. And, and we used to go downtown, and they had a fighting, a boxing ring they put out in front of those, and we all went down there, and uh, they broadcast the Bradley games. You know. Adventure Sports Outdoors is brought to you in part by Corsall Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products, buyers of standing timber in Smithfield, Kelleher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's Riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily. The Peoria Sportsman's Club, delicious dinners every Tuesday from 5.30 till 7.30 and Friday from 6 till 8 on beautiful Spring Lake in Manito, Illinois. Goodwill, supporting our veterans with job placement assistance, health, housing, and resource referrals, and the General Wayne A. Downing Home for Veterans, all because you shop and donate. Our thanks to all of these sponsors. You know what it says on this lady statue's patch? It says liberty. And if there's anything more important than liberty, I would like to hear about it. Because uh, it might be sweeter, but I don't know anything sweeter than liberty herself. Thank you for joining another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. As always, we love having you here. Stay tuned for next month because we have something real sweet for you. Until next time, I'm Billy Canterbury with Adventure Sports Outdoors. In the words of my father, keep your powder dry and your warm wet. I'll see you next month.